Distress Oxide. And what's cool about Distress Oxide, they are a dye and pigment fusion. Totally new to, I think, the ink world. And what I love about that is Distress has really evolved throughout its 13 year uh, career, really. We had started with six simple dye inks and it's expanded into paints and stains and markers and crayons and glitters and embossing powders and all of those great things. But to have another new ink to the mix, that is what's great. Now, oxides are referred to as dye and pigment fusion. It's like, kind of what does that mean? Well, it's because it has both properties of an ink pad. We've got the opacity of the pigment ink, the translucency of a dye, and when you combine the two, you create magic. So here's a couple of things to point out when it comes to these two properties. Well, first of all, because it has a pigment value, that means we can use it on a variety of surfaces, light and dark, okay? Because we're going to get that opacity of a pigment. But we can also get this cool blendability of a dye. Okay, if you've ever worked with pigment inks, they usually muddy up if you try to put too many colors, but because this has dye properties, we create some incredible backgrounds. Now, Distress Oxides, they're in the traditional size case. It is a, a silver plastic, so it's easily identifiable from the black ink pads. The surface itself is a felt pad. Usually when we think of a pigment ink, it's that squishy foam, glycerin, kind of sticky and gooey, and this is not. So this is the same firm surface that we always see in our Distress inks, okay? Now, this is a very wet ink, which is nice, but it's not too wet, which means it doesn't have to be heat set, it will air dry, but it does give me the ability to stamp, stencil, blend, and even emboss. So I can stamp with these oxides and use my embossing powder and emboss with them. Now when we're using these on surfaces, not only can we blend, but we can stamp. That's what's really cool about this. So if I stamp with this just on a surface like Kraft, you can see that it stamps with incredible detail. It's a pigment, right? We can stamp it and it's going to dry and we get great detail. But Distress Oxides react with water. So if we spray this with water, the image will oxidize. And we actually start to separate the two layers and we get this really luminous effect just by combining this with water. That's where the whole game changing happens. This is a distressing background. We're used to seeing this. We have these dyes and it creates beautiful backgrounds because distress reacts with water, but a translucent dye, you have to be careful with how many layers because too many layers of a translucent dye turn to mud. However, with an oxide, because it is a dye and a pigment, we have the ability to layer and layer and layer and we can end up with any colors we want sitting on the top, but it also has this wonderful, creamy kind of smooth, uh, texture and it's almost like we want phyllo vision, right? But the cool thing about this is that you would think that this chalk would rub off and it doesn't because again It's not a chalk ink. It is an oxide So here's how it works. We're gonna go through and do some backgrounds I'm going to work on the craft sheet I'm just going to take the oxides and I'm going to press down and kind of move keep that in mind Whenever you're applying ink to a surface you need to press down. It's a suspended medium Right, so you need to press to get ink out of there. That's why it's not important to store your ink pads any specific way. People think I need to store them upside down, sideways. It doesn't matter, ink is suspended. So the only way to get ink out of the pad is to press down, similarly would on a stamp. Now you can probably tell right away that if you were working with traditional dye inks, you probably shouldn't have this many colors on your craft sheet at one time, but with oxide, we can. So what we're going to do is spray this with water. And I want to spray this until I have droplets of color. That's really important. We're going to take a surface. Now, this is mixed media heavy stock. And mixed media heavy stock is different than a manila tag. I know I have one. There we go. That's a manila tag. You can see right away the difference in color, but also how it holds up to water. Usually when we work with a manila tag on a surface, as soon as it gets wet, a manila tag starts to curl. And the heavy stock likes to stay flat when we're working with it. It's important whenever working with inks of any kind, whether they're dye or whether they're oxide, wet on wet blends color, wet on dry layers color. So this first layer, you just need to get what you get and be happy with it. Don't keep going back into that to try to fill in the blanks on your first layer or you will muddy your colors. Dry it with a heat tool for just a little bit, then we can go back in. Let's start building that oxide background. Now the more layers and the more water you start to add, the more it's going to start to oxidize. And this is what I love about it. The Distress Oxides react whether they're wet right now or even after I dry it with a heat tool, I can go back and add water and it will react just like Distress Inks. But our layerability, wow, ridiculous.
And you see as it's starting to dry, it starts to kind of get that hazy kind of oxidized look. Now, if it looks like sludge, it dries like sludge. So if you don't like something, take that off because it will always dry like that. So now we're gonna go back in. I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna put some bright colors on the dark side, dark colors on the bright side. And we're really gonna start to layer this around. Really cool. All right, and add a little bit of water around here. And then I look at my background and say, hmm, what is it missing? Oh, it's missing pink and yellow. Let's throw that in too. Why not? Because we can with an oxide. So here we'll take a little bit of worn lipstick. Let's throw that over there. And let's even take some fossilized amber. Look at all these colors on the cut sheet. So cool. Because with an oxide, I can decide at any time where I want to put a color, and that color is going to sit right onto the surface. So I can take that pink and yellow, and you can see how it's going to sit right over the top of that blue. And as it dries, you'll see that worn lipstick just kind of oxidize in a very light pink. That fossilized amber start to oxidize. Again, we can just drip a little water over the top of it. Yeah, see how excited they are for oxide? You can't even imagine. <laughs> they are just, they're just cheering. They walk around and cheer all day long for these because they are so excited. I don't blame them. I'm excited too. I think they're cool. All right, just gonna go in a couple more times and now I'm being just a little bit more particular as far as where I wanna put color. You know, do I wanna put a little bit of a purple there, a little bit of red there? Look at that, uh, now we're good. Now we are good. And let's, let's be realistic. If this was dye, we would have been done long ago. We would have put so many layers of all these colors of regular distressed dye ink, everything would have looked muddy. Instead, you can look through this and see the red and the orange and the yellows and the blues and greens. See, they cannot get enough of these. All right. Let me clean this up. And we have our oxide background. Look at that. That is so cool. Awesome. And you can stamp on this. Everything that we normally do with our distress inks, we can stamp on this. Really cool.